Okay, so I'll share my screen and we'll restart. Okay, so this is the things which I'll cover today. Okay, so uh, ben, Benny has already set up that agenda that what we are going to do. Okay, so the first things uh, introduction. So he introduced us and we'll start with the next one. Uh, so what we are going, I'll clarify a little more on the introduction side. So if you see uh, on our channel, Cryptometer channel, we have already posted almost uh, all uh, like almost uh, videos and all topics for CSA, especially for the CSA, where uh, we have that beginners playlist. Okay, so you'll find uh, most of the topics. So if you are not finding any topics, okay, uh, let us know. So what I have done in this session is that I've combined like all together those topics. So those topics is little in detail. So here I'll try to what I'll what I'll try to do here is I'll try to cover everything together as application. There you have learned a uh, separate separate separately each and every concept. One second, let me looks like someone is trying to join. Just give me a second. Sorry for that. Few more folks join. Okay, so I was saying. Yeah, so when you're saying something. I was just saying like a few more guys coming in, I see. So, yeah, yeah. do you want to, I think we're almost 12 minutes in. I think we should get started. And yes. anyways, the recordings will be there so everyone can be shared. And just one point to note, like these are the topics which are there, but there may be some other topics which you guys are interested. As I said, like, please raise those points. Maybe during the session, if you want to have any questions or any other topics you want to know, or you can park those questions at the end, we can take it. Yeah. So, so like as I mentioned that most of the videos are there but here what I'll try to do I'll combine all those topics and we'll develop a sample applications live and I'll be using most of the rules okay so as of now you are learning like a class stu structure case type for validations flow action sections and other things we are trying to learn so okay so we'll see each and every things here today okay in this session okay so let's first understand what is the business scenario what business scenario we are going to cover Okay, so the business scenario, this is the business scenario which I'm going to cover it today. Okay, so I'm going to develop a live applications here. And so this is the vehicle insurance process flow, okay, or auto insurance the process flow. So in this one, what do you usually do? If you see anywhere in the world, if you go for a vehicle or auto insurance, okay, mainly you'll see the kind of a three stages. Okay, so first thing is, let's say that either you call, okay, to uh, insurance company will say hey i want an insurance okay so then they will say okay fine no issues give me some details and i can uh, create a profile for you and then it will go for approval and then finally you have to pay pay the money and then uh, you'll get your insurance so this is what we do so if you see here i have designed that three steps sorry it looks like someone is still Okay, so if you see here, you know, we have like I have given the three stages. Okay, so if you compare with, so start comparing with the Pega. Okay, so this is let's say the business flow. If some, the problem is if you're, you are a beginner, right? So you have to transform that requirement to your use case, right? So that you that we need to do. So here, like I have little little bit, I have already transformed it, but just things that you've got a raw document. Okay, where you are saying that you have to develop a some application so based on that you need to extract and create a steps uh, first stages and then a stages uh, a steps okay so that you need to do so here a steps is that uh, sorry stages that create approve and fulfill okay so if you see what all the steps we are going to perform in these stages okay so while creations stage we we'll, we are going to do enter applicant detail yes obviously that whoever is applying for whoever is applying for uh, insurance so will I will enter the details of applicant and then we'll enter the details of driver information because driver information is also mandatory because who is going to drive because if you see in real time insurance factors on many things okay like the price of insurance like who is going to drive uh, let's say that a beginner is driving then obviously that uh, the cost of insurance will be high if any experienced driver is driving then cost of insurance will be low okay if you're driving from like list last 10 years then yeah cost will be low so the, those kind of a things also we have to factor 
the next one the next thing is that vacuole information so that is also important attribute which we have to um, enter that what kind of a vacuole okay and how many vacuole you have you can have multiple vacuole as well right and then finally what we do we'll submit for approval okay so when we'll submit for approval it will go for that next le level okay let's say the person who is you called and the person is creating your profile after that creation of profile he'll submit for that approval okay in approval stage let's say they'll verify your few details that you are the legitimate person or not or let's say you are giving either your pan card aadhar card or ssn number so they'll verify few things okay and maybe they'll fetch your previous history as well previous uh, previous driving history those kind of things they'll do and then finally they'll approve your reject or uh, approve or reject your request okay so here also you can see that after creation of profile i mentioned that notify applicant because this is important okay that i should get notified that my profile has been created so that i can attract okay let's say that that approval has not been ha happened in in last like in, in next 3 4 days so then you can call to company okay by saying that reference number so in email in notify applicant email will send that the reference number the case id of the pega okay so here after approve reject again will notify that your uh, process flow has been like uh, your request has been approved or rejected so here two kind of a notifications can happen uh, on approve okay so one thing is that we can uh, notify to the creator okay the person who has created a profile and also we can notify to the person who has uh, called for that insurance so here there is two time two kind of a notifications but we'll see how many will configure based on our time finally after that a uh, full uh, like approval what will happen okay we have to pay okay so here that payment things is missing but yeah we have to pay first things and once we pay what will happen because pega if you see pega is not a source system so we do not store the details of uh, uh, any uh, kind of uh, any businesses okay we store the data into some external system so what we will do we will take the applicant details and everything and uh, uh, send it to external system so here you can see that that is where i mentioned update the policy details to external source system so let's say one system is there which holds the entire policy details of organizations so we'll call that system and and say that oh, hey this is the details of an applicant new applicant okay and this is that uh, um, uh, this is the policy he wants okay save to your database and give me a policy number because pega will not generate the policy number that system will generate the policy number okay and then give us the policy number so what will happen in response will receive the policy number from external system okay and then will update the case pega case because eventually in pega what why we are generating this flow mostly to process the flow like process that vacuole insurance and uh, for in future we can do the auditing as well on this one okay so for that only we will take that policy number from external system update our case okay pega case and then notify the applicant and the case creator okay that this your your policy has been created and this is your policy number so this is the overall uh, business requirement so let me know if you have any questions on this process flow okay after that i will move ahead into the development phase so i'll wait for a couple of a minute and if you have any questions uh, please let me know we can discuss here on the process flow guys in pega like you need you should be able to understand the requirements process and so that that goes very hand in hand for the developers it's not only a business analyst question so developers should also understand what is achieved so that that can be brought in into the brought into the um, development of the right components right in this agile environment things goes uh, very collaborative way so it's yeah that is where the session is you can ask uh, your questions yes yeah yeah let's let's get your questions if you have any doubts in understanding this process let's make it little bit more interactive So, so just comment in in comment sections that if you have got the business requirement that what we are going to do today okay if you have got it just uh, uh, say yes in in comment sections and then we'll proceed because so any questions the... any questions you have don't hesitate uh, if you don't ask question that means you didn't understood anything right because see understanding yeah. business requirement is a core things okay before we go for development
So we uh, let it, why don't we ask some questions on mm-hmm. the requirements to individuals if uh, there is a question I see. Very yes so Danus, yes that's correct so here uh, maybe here oh, I'll, I'll i'll do some simulations but your point is correct that we will call to external system so here only you, you will we will use connect rest rule okay or connect so any connect integrations will connect to external system and say that okay this is the details of a new policy okay so we'll share a few critical details to that system okay that this is that uh, applicant name this is the car okay and this is the driver information so you create a policy for this person and give me the policy id okay so in response from the system we'll get the policy number and we'll update our case in our case you know, let's say we will have a, a attribute call policy number we'll update that attribute and resolve our case so that is where we we will be using external system but yeah we don't have external system today but i'll show you how we can do it in in live also so i'll try to save that same details in pega in a pega database and i'll generate a policy number anyone have any other question okay okay let's move forward then okay so if you ask if i ask you okay now we understood that the requirement okay so what is the first step okay so now we have to go to pega right so in pega the first step is we need application right and let me know if you all agree okay that the first things which we need is application so let's go ahead and create application okay so for creating an applications what is the prerequisite that also we need to understand as a pega developer that we need to ask for like environment where we will be do it okay so either you need a sandbox dev environment okay to to start the development okay so as a lead or if you are even if you are freshers you need a pega instance and then your id okay so let's say your id is still not created then you need a default pega id okay so administrator at the rate pega.com and the password is install okay even if you will install the personal edition you'll get this okay so i have already installed the personal editions and i have logged in as a, a pega direct administrator.com so let me know if everyone can see the pega screen so you can see that i have logged in with the pega uh, at direct administrator.com okay and this is that uh, default id with, and the applications is pega platform okay so this is the out of the box pega platform 8. Dot. this is like uh, what is pega rules 8 okay so this is the application so everyone can see that pega screen right yeah okay so now the first things as i mentioned that we are going to create an applications okay but be- before going and creating the applications one more thing is important okay i know if you're a junior it doesn't matter much because most of the time you'll get applications already created by your leads okay but if you learn this from the beginning it will help you that what all things we need it before creating an applications okay so let me show you one thing here just a moment So while creating a video, okay, I have mentioned these things, okay, prerequisite to create applications, okay. So the first things we need is the applications name that what we want to do, okay. So here we want to manage that insurance. So let's say our applications name is insurance management. That is uh, the the most important things that we have to determine the applications name. Let's say that your insur- uh, applications name is too big, okay. Then you can use that as a label insurance management, and then you can give a short form, okay. Let's say insurance M or insurance MGMT, whatever you want, okay, because that's a rule name. But um, again, you can change that label. The next thing is that you need is the organization for which organizations you are building, okay. So that is important. So here you can see that I have mentioned HDFC, ICC, any banks or for any insurance company, okay, you need that organizations and then divisions for which divisions you are like going to build these applications, okay, like finance department or loan department okay so that is the third things and the fourth is the unit for which unit you want because it's like if you see this this is like a hierarchy you must have read as of now if if you are going through the pega courses that organizations divisions and unit this is how the pega maintains that hierarchy so we need these details as well 
and then uh, after creating that we need operator id to log in so let's so let's determine that what we can use for today's session so let's say i'll use uh, uh, applications name insurance management okay and organizations i'll use qtm okay and maybe divisions we can use finance only and then unit i will use insurance okay or we can just leave it unit also so that doesn't much matter but yeah you should know that what it what it means okay so let's go ahead and try to create that application so from here okay so you can see that this is the applications menu from here we have to create application so we can select new application uh, one more important things here you can see that okay it is asking build from scratch yes we want to build from scratch and then in this one it is asking what type of experience do you want for your application so you can see that we have a theme cosmos traditional architecture okay and then cosmos react latest architecture so this one we are going to use it this one uh, is a uh, little like in this one the pega the ui will be in react okay so this is the new concept which is pega is coming so it's still not mature okay you can see in 8.7 and 8.8 .8, more mature but we'll be selecting this one um, okay if you have any questions we can discuss on this one later but for now i'll select the traditional cosmos okay if you have interacted or if you have interacted with 7.x you might have heard ui toolkit okay ui kit so that was another so uh, applications just for that ui okay but here we are going to use theme cosmos traditional architecture so i selected this one now it says it is asking me uh, um, the name of application so i'll say auto insurance okay now okay usually okay if you're a beginner what you will do is just create a application so yes definitely it will create but what will happen in the name of organizations division and unit pega will take some random value you must have seen that one okay but what is the challenge with that one that if like let's say you are going into full fledged development and if you are like not selecting give your organizations just asking pega to select that organizations then it will be difficult for you to search any rule search classes right so if you are coming to app explorer and trying to search any classes it will be little difficult okay so that is where we should give some meaningful name and for that we have to go for advanced configuration so let's see that advanced configuration the first option is that application structures what we want to create so here you can see that we have options for framework and implementation okay so I'll not go into deep, okay, but framework like earlier in 7.x or 6.x, we used to get both options, okay, either create a framework separately or create implementation separately or create both, but now Pega is giving either one of them options, okay, so framework we create when we want to create a reusable framework, okay, so I, I just give some examples, Pega also have some framework like they have a smart dispute or they have a CFSI framework okay for to handle that so it's like a pre build applications which we can use for our businesses okay but for now here I'll just uh, select implementations will go with implementation okay so this is our applications ID okay so this will be our applications name uh, if you have noticed like, like there was a name space in the middle right in the first screen now here here the space is gone yeah so, so not this minor thing so you can see that I was as I was talking that it will take some organizations name so you can see that this is not a, uh, a name which we can remember okay so for that only we'll replace with let's say we'll replace with QTM okay so we'll just give some name and then division so we can um, we can give that name also so let's say we want to give the division is insurance so we can give insurance and then unit for now we can leave it okay that's not a problem okay and then here the next thing is coming that how many layers we want to generate okay so as of now there is no layer so if you see this is the class structure so anyone if you're going for interview okay people will ask that how pega will form the class structure so you need to say organizations applications and then work so this is fixed okay and this we are not going to change okay and then you need to explain that if you need a division layer okay then divisions will also come before applications so see here the divisions are selected insurance so that is where it, it took that short form insurance so qtm insurance and auto insurance okay so this is our applications layer and then work now you can ask the questions that what is the benefit of this divisions layer okay so this is for more reusability okay so 
let's say in futures we are going to in this divisions we are going to build another application okay so here we have auto insurance let's say we are going to build health insurance okay so few of the things which we developed at this layer we can reuse it okay so for usability purpose we use that okay so i think that is uh, most important and that is enough for now to understand the division layer we use to uh, provide more reusability the next one is that unit layer this is like one more layer okay we are adding okay but that we are not going to do that it's again unit is also to categorize okay based on unit okay to provide more and more reusability okay but we are not going to select this one today so i'll just create this one qtm auto insurance and work now once i'll save it and create what all things pega will create that okay so that is also important so pega will create a class so the class will be as a every time saying the organizations applications name and then work okay so this will be our work class parallelly pega will create a data class so qtm auto ins data will see and then int also will see so pega will create all three layer okay you anywhere in the world you'll see that integrations layer data layer applications layer so okay in java or in any traditional programming language also we have this kind of a concept of the layer so it will create that that much then it will create application side for us okay and then uh, organizations obviously organizations will it will create and division so this org layer it will create and then access group it will create so let's do that so any questions before i, I hit on create button let me know if you have any questions i i can we can discuss and then i'll create that application any question okay okay so let's move ahead okay so i'll create the application so it will take us uh, some time okay so now our applications we have created okay and it's saying done so the moment will say done okay uh, it will switch our applications from pega platform to our application so let's do that so now we need an id okay our pega would have already created id so let's create one id to log in and start develop uh, start development for auto insurance okay so let's see that okay i was saying that it will create a access group so let's see if you got that access group or not so if i come here to access group okay let's see that so you can see that here we got that auto insurance users auto insurance authors we got that two okay this is what important so for users will refer this one and for authors for the development will refer this access group okay so let me create one id okay and then we'll start a development so to create operator id okay how we have to do we have to just save as any existing operator update the details that's it so i'll save as this one and i'll just give auto admin name and then i'll update the access group so access group is important so if you see here uh, i have mentioned that how we log in okay so operator we are creating and then in operator we'll plug access group and in access group we already have applications and portal i'll show you so if you see side by side i'm comparing with with the videos also so now this is done and i'll just update few more things okay so let me open this access group and show you so as i mentioned on that uh, word document that uh, applications will have portal so we have that express portal so this is like app studio and then we have the user portals and other things also and then our applications is also there auto insurance okay so fine we got everything now let's log in let's log in with this one so one more things we'll also do we can update the password so for administrator at directpega.com we have the password installed so i'll just update this one to roles And just to stop me like comment in the like a chat sections if you're not getting it okay so we can stop we can explain and then we can move forward because this is as Benny mentioned that this is a uh, more like interactive sessions where we want you to learn 
okay so this is the, our landing page okay in the app studio so you must have heard that so uh, earlier we had a little different like we don't have the app studio we have dco or something else okay but that was not effective but now if you see pega is promoting low code and then we can do many things okay many things from the app studio only okay app studio means that uh, the people who doesn't know much pega they can also create so for that only uh, pega have developed this app studio to promote low code okay and that is where you see this or uh, here this term citizen developer so citizen developer means that bsa also okay business analyst can also develop the process flow develop the the data model so i'll skip for now it is asking me to create a uh, case type but for now i'll skip it okay so now we got it okay our applications is ready so let's review that okay whatever we talked that we got those classes or not so we already see that we got a uh, access group and then you can see that this is the applications which we got so if i open this one here so we got applications now the important things is that we got a rule set as well so you can see that we got auto insurance so we got one uh, one rule set okay and this is the applications layer rule set okay so pega created automatically and then we got one uh, we got in uh, auto insurance int so integrations layer also we got for app layer okay integrations rule set and then we got we skipped a division so that is where it pega didn't created uh, rule set for divisions layer and then we got organizations layer rule set and organizations layer int rule set okay so this is the rule set let's come to the classes so we have to click on class so if you see that we got qtm auto insurance and work okay and if you remember i explained while creating that we'll get all layers so you can see that we got data int work and ui pages so this was not there in 7.x but now if we have to create any landing pages so pega is adding that ui pages okay so that is that is the four class we got it okay so we create our work okay any case type will create under work integrations anything will comes under integrations it will go to int layer data any supporting data will go to data layer and for the ty pages we will use ui pages classes okay so any questions on this one so you can see that pega here also associated classes in the applications layer okay in applications if you come to cases and data so as of now we have not created any data that is why it's not showing anything same for case type but we have associated classes okay so this is the int class this is the data class and this is the ui page class so under this only we're going to create any classes okay so any questions on on this one so we got this class we got the access group we got the application so now almost everything is ready and now we can move to the next phase okay our creating our data model and creating the case type so let me know i'll stop for a second here okay let me know if you have any questions because you need to understand this concept okay this rule set how this got rule set created now where i should start the development and those kind of a things yeah so these are like basic steps that we have to rewind and do a quick recap what we did right so far so we look to the requirement of this insurance uh, policy that we were trying to build up this application for so that the customer will get influenced and then based upon that we build up the security model of access group and sorry, the organization or tax structure and then we get into the access group and the rule sets and the class structure so these are the, the basic building blocks for your application to get into uh, the more detailed functional development of the components right <coughs> Okay, so uh, yes, Indo. So I'll explain quickly. Okay, what we're doing. So here we're trying to build a sample applications. Okay, of uh, for insurance. Uh, let me show you the process flow quickly. So this is what we're going to build. Okay, so this is what the business we defined, and it will have a three stages: create, approve, fulfill. Okay, so in first stage we'll be taking that uh, data of applicant, driver information, car information, or the vehicle information, and then we'll submit for approval. And in that after approval, okay, either it can be approved. or reject will go for fulfillment and in fulfillment will call that external system okay to give this policy details that hey i want to generate like create a policy details for this person so okay and then external system will take the data and give us generate a policy number and give that policy number to pega and then will update that uh, policy number to our case and resolve the case so on a high level this is the process flow and as of now what we have done okay we have built that applications 
and uh, that is what i explain okay so this is our applications and this is the rule set in classes okay so let me know on a high level if you got it and anyone have any questions okay let me know and then we'll jump to the data model and and since don't worry now we are going to discuss the data model so in that one also you'll understand the process flow more that what we are going to do here uh, you know one question is there in the chat can do it yeah go ahead Uh, question is is there any option to change organization name or position and that uh no usually uh, i mean if we change then our class structures will change right so it will be a good effort because you can see that okay our class gen got generated so if you are like at this stage okay let's say you have not developed anything just created this one organizations division and unit and at this point of time if you want to change you can simply throw these applications and create a new one okay but once you start doing the development it will be very tough okay to change that and if you see that usually we don't change the organizations right because any organizations if you take in the world that doesn't change overnight okay divisions can change sometimes but applications uh, like sorry organizations we don't change but at this stage okay where we are you can change it so you can simply dump this whole Uh, applications and recreate a new one because as of now we have not created any rules. Okay. Thanks. There was another question. Like, can we delete or rename the applications later? uh yes we can we can delete and rename that okay but yeah you can rename that but if you rename that what challenge will happen is that let's say auto ins is there and if you're not liking the application's name okay so i can create and then i can add this rule set so if you do that you need to change that rule set as well because usually what we do we keep in the sync up okay so let's say i'll i'll save as this one okay so i'll just use full name okay auto insurance But if you see here that the rule set, okay, this is fine. You are like an update. That is fine. Okay, so that error is gone. Okay, so if you see here that our application's name is auto insurance, okay, and then the rule set is auto ins, okay, so it's mismatch. But like sometimes we do this kind of things, okay. So we create either a new versions or we create all together a new applications for POC. But usually we don't do for development, but for your POC you can do it. I'll explain you why you need that kind of things, okay. In some scenario that let's say that you are working on some POC and you want some rule set okay which you don't want to expose it to the others developer so you can in this rules in this applications you can add let's say you have created a test uh, test dev rule set okay and then rule set is 0 1 0 and then you can create it okay i can't save it if i'll save it will throw me error because i have not created this one as of now but yes you can do that okay but that's for poc okay if you do if you promote this one to productions it won't look good so but yeah to um, do something which will not impact to other developers okay other or the testers sometimes we do in dev and qa so yes we can do it but ideally it's not recommended for production in what is the effect like if we delete the application will be now okay so if i delete that applications then you won't be able to log in okay so then you need to again log in with a uh, uh, system administrator okay and then again you need to restore that because what will happen once you try to log in if you see that the login flow is like this it will operator and then it will look for access group and access group will look for application so let's say if this we don't find then the problem will happen okay it will throw error okay so we won't be able to log in so then the other options is now if like let's say you have referred this access group your applications access group and you have deleted applications then no users can log in okay so then you need to log in with administrator okay and then you need to correct it i can show you so let's say i'll delete it okay for it yeah it is not allowing me to delete but yeah you sometime i need to see that why but yeah we can delete it but that that the problem will happen okay So it is saying that uh, it is being referred, and then uh, other few things is complaining. But sometimes I have seen that okay, uh, we can delete it, but that will problem will happen when I'll try to log in. It will it won't allow. So that is where we should avoid that. Yeah, because like before deleting the application, you need all the associated rules to check. Yeah. Then to the pair, it does do. 
okay good okay so the next things which we will discuss is the data model okay because if you see okay people skip these things okay but a data model discussions is very much important okay so don't skip this and focus uh, okay on this part because usually what does a beginners do is that they'll go now they got the environment they'll create tons of property in this class work class which is not right pega is also not recommending that one okay even i have seen that senior developer also go and create all properties in work class okay but our focus is we have to create a less rule in work class and create more either a property or any type of rule more in more in data layer okay so to create that okay our data layer should be perfect okay so we i mean like i'm not saying that you you can create a perfect in a day one but yeah you have to try to create okay so let's discuss that so i'll come here so if you see here one second let me show you one thing just give me a moment okay so let's say this is that insurance form which we are trying to automate okay so this is the uh, like insurance form which we are trying to automate and this i i okay so this uh, like currently let's say that system okay we are going to build that applications and this organization is doing this part manually okay so whenever we are asking that okay i need applications loan uh, sorry insurance okay policy so then they will give this long list of form and then we have to fill manually and submit it now we are trying to automate this one so if you see okay on the red one just focus on the red one so first one is insured informations or the applicant info applicant information so we can treat this is as a one data okay because while creating that okay we need to fill the applicant details that is what i have mentioned in my stage as well okay in the first stage the first st step is filled applicant details so the first data model we can clearly think is that the insurance information insured information sorry applicant information the, the second one is the driver information okay and in driver information you, you can see here that we can have multiple driver because obviously if you have one car okay in your home and then multiple person can drive okay so we have to take insurance in such a way such a way that everyone can drive okay so the second data model is driver informations third one is vehicle informations or auto information because that also we have to capture okay so this is the on a high level three we have a three data model so if you see here on a high level i have designed that one okay so the first one is that applicant name and then co applicant name okay uh, so this will come under applicant information and then we have a address okay so why i have mentioned like this for address let's say that i can create those these attributes under this all this also okay in the same class okay uh, in like after co applicant name but i have created this one also as a separate data model okay because this will help us in future because let's say in futures we have multiple addresses okay so in those kind of a things it will help so it will provide more uh, extensibility reusability to us if you go with a new separate class okay so you can see that how that applicant informations data model is branching out so first we have applicant informations in that one we have a two single value attribute and then we have object called address then this object will refer to address details okay address details it will refer to this class okay or this data model and then in this one also you can see that we have a state right so we have to build that entity ui so we cannot ask users to write that state name so in that case we have to provide a drop down for a state and city so again i have branch out this one state with with another data model called state okay and in this one we will have a four attribute a state code a state name a state city and city code and city name okay so this is how you can see that how i am designing that in like applicant information creating it any questions on this one how i am designing see this is how we have to design right because the more and more will branch out will break that okay it will help us in future so any questions yeah. on on this one understand the reusability concept right like yeah. uh, keeping the future in mind that's very important guys is um, so that uh, like as leo mentioned right like there will be multiple addresses and all so that's thought process has to be baked in so that it can be scalable application for future 
I mean, see, if you ask me, there is no harm. Okay, we can create all attribute in work only. Okay, uh, there is, an, I mean, nothing wrong. But the problem will happen in future. So, okay, when we'll go for usability, when we get enhancement to the application. So, in that kind of a situations, we'll face issue. That is where you can see that. Okay, I'm branching out and then creating more and more data classes. So let's move ahead and the similar way you can see that I have created a, a separate data model for driver informations. Okay. So we have, we are trying to capture few driver informations. So here we have the name, gender and other things. Okay. And date of birth. Okay. Now we have to also focus on more things that what all rule we are going to cover. Okay. So as of now we have covered the key, like um, we have created that application. So we have covered operator little bit operator and then we have covered access group okay in this one we'll we are going to cover data model okay we are going to cover data pages uh, because if you see here we are going to cover cascading drop down also okay so we'll uh, first show that state and then after that we'll show the city name so we are going to cover this part we are going to cover data pages uh, auto count sorry uh, drop, cascading drop down okay here we are going to take the date of birth and will not ask user to and give us the age we will calculate the age so here we'll use the declare expression so here you can see that i'm trying to use all rules okay and then obviously we'll use validation so we'll validate few things okay so then we'll use both kind of validations client side and server side validations okay and then finally we have the vac vehicle informations or the auto informations so in this one also we'll have few informations okay and then why these things okay because see to determine that what will be the cost of insurance we need these details okay based on that only we can determine and then finally we need one payment information because in fulfillment test is we need this payment information so these many data model we need it so on a high level if i see how many one and then we have a two and then three four five six so you can see that for a very small applications even very uh, small applications very uh, small poc we are doing and here only have determined six data model right so now we are going to uh, going to create this data model but before that let me know if you have any questions on this data model because this is one of the important topic okay you should know to how to design the data model if you're finding it fast please let us know yeah right and we can repeat Please let me know, okay, because this is very important. You can ask questions on how I like kind of a design this data model because you can see that for a small application, small POC applications, we have a six or seven and this is just for POC. Okay, for POC, we have determined six uh, or seven data model. Maybe uh, on behalf of others, I am asking one question. So yeah. what, what was the driving thing Lalit, like to get to this uh, a thought process like why you build up these six models why not uh, eight or why why is there any way to break it up further or is there a way to yeah yeah obviously it? so obviously Benny so uh, we can break it further okay so let's say in vehicle informations also okay if you think right that I have like uh, if I show this form right so in vehicle vehicle informations you can see that lot of fields are there okay so for PUC I have reduced that but you can see that anti lock breaks you can then airbag so we can also further break down if we have more details okay but now in this for this POC we have these many attributes but the if we're trying to take more details okay then yes we can further break it even for the driver informations okay so here again we can reuse this one okay so here you can see that i have just mentioned in driver informations name like basic details but this driver informations will have also address right so i can just include address here okay so see how i'm um, here only i showed that example uh, example that how we can reuse that classes or the data model because driver can have yeah. multiple addresses right or it he can have a different address even yeah, even so in the same city uh, it can have a different address so here we can use it right Th this data yeah. model so basically this this data model can be ex is, is also extensible yes right? yes right? yeah not all, not only you can scale well, uh, under each data models, but overall data model is also scalable. Like you can have to model eight, um, two more new models added in. Like uh, uh, there may be a vehicle address, there may be uh, any additional things, right? So yeah, there is a question coming up. Uh, I didn't understand clearly. 
why we should create so many data models without using wok okay so I that's a, okay so that's a good question so why we are creating because we need to organize that right our data so see we cannot create these many classes or these many attributes so let's say i just think for a minute that i'll not create this data model okay and i'll ask you that okay you go ahead and design this one okay create this flow okay or this form in pega let's think for a second that i'll i'll as lead i'll give a task okay go ahead and create this form in pega what you will do you will create this terms of property in your work class but that is not recommended okay in work layer we should keep only the important rule okay which will call the data layer rule okay if you keep that one all in work layer the application's quality will be okay, application quality won't be good okay because it won't be extensible extensible we cannot reuse it more and more so that is where we need to branch out so data you can see that data classes is meant for the data so whatever the data we are taking okay it should have on the data layer i should have a separate separate data okay i can go ahead and create these attributes but just think okay that we have here 50 attribute if i'll create those 50 attribute in work layer and especially if i'm creating from the app studio i'm not sure like you have noticed or not so whenever you create any property from the app studio especially in the work class it expose that expose that means it will create a column in the table okay in work table so what will happen okay eventually these these are not that all attributes are not that important but you will end up by exposing these all, all attributes in your work table okay which will reduce your performance because each time like uh, because this this we are we have not going to use all these attributes for reporting but we have unnecessary exposed this many columns in work table so these kind of issues are there you will find many applications legacy applications where people have created so many um, property in work class but that is not recommended nowadays one one important things which i missed to explain here okay so now we talked about database so you can see that our work class is mapped okay so each class in pega if you have a concrete class it will be mapped with a table okay if it is a abstract class okay so in abstract class we are just using for providing the the structure okay we don't save the data so you can see that this is our work class okay so this it is mapped to this class so if i just do test connectivity we can see that it is mapped to this class okay so this is our work table so more and more if you understand then when you'll go for a real development you'll call this as a work table work table so that is what we say and this is if i go to class also this class i will see that this is mapped to work class see test connection the same table and it is inherited with work desk covered as and if i show you the data one okay that will be abstract class so it belongs to class group because under this one we will create a, a case type i'll show you that how uh, we will configure that one okay so if you see the data one definitions for data it will be abstract class see abstract class it doesn't belongs to any class group so anand you got it on a high level okay good yes yeah, so don't don't miss this things okay because this is very important okay we need to have the data model okay if you skip this part like let's say if, while you're building your applications if you skip this part in okay then you then your applications won't be extensive okay we cannot re you can see that in front of you only that when beni asked this question that how we are going to extend i showed you right that i i can just use this address here okay if not then what will happen okay let's say i have the driver information if someone is asking me to add these also driver address then again what will happen i'll end up by doing like this then i'll add here see then i'll add this one so you can see that the will keep adding attributes which is not good okay so that is where we need to create a structure any any further question what is this person class group yeah so as you are just defining this class groups and all maybe you can um, explain them the difference right class group and work pool work group all those concepts yeah yes yeah, sure so here okay somewhere in our application yeah. 
we refer that in access group So it's the same thing class group or that uh, work pool. Okay, so uh, almost is the same thing that naming is a little different. So work pool is that it's a, like a pool of work. Okay, inside this one. So this is referring to work class. Okay, so this is the work pool. Okay, we say and inside this one, let's say I'm going to create it two more um, case type. Okay, so the first case type is let's say create insurance. Okay, the second one is that claim insurance. Okay, so for those two case type, okay, claim and then uh, claim and then create okay this is the work pool okay so it's a, like a pool of work and if you see that this is referred to okay one table only okay sorry so i i showed that class also let me open that class once again okay so if i'll create a new case type class i'll show you that one when i'll create that okay uh th that Test connectivity when, when I'll do the data base will be the same. So basically, all that okay work okay will come under this work pool. Okay, so that is where we say work pool work under this one will uh, so we'll not we cannot have a different table for claim and we cannot have a different table uh, for a let's say uh, create policy. Okay, so we cannot have those two things will come under this one. So that is where we say work pool. Now come to class group. Okay. So class group is again, it's the same thing. It's a group of class. Okay. Inside that one will, uh, it's like the group. Okay. And inside that one will create a, a case type class and those classes will be belongs to class group. Okay. That cannot be because those will also be concrete class because we are going to have the instances, but those will belongs to this class group. So that is, but uh, like uh, uh, the concept is same. So it's just refer to the same database table. Okay. And inside that one, whatever the case types we create, okay, all belongs to this class group only. So in a high level, you got it. But when we create a data class, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you create a data class, is it a concrete class? Yeah, yeah, no, so Benny, I'll explain that. Okay. So when we create a concrete data class, okay, so I'll explain you, okay, on from my data model. So see this one here, okay, we have driver information. So driver information. Let me just yeah. So driver information. Okay, so I'll create this one as an abstract class. Okay, and this one. Okay, so this one will be my abstract class. Okay, so abstract class is why because I'm not going to save any instance of this one. It will be just I'll create a one property in work class. Okay, driver information which will hold this one. Okay, because I don't need for reporting or anything for now. So just to provide the abstractions or the structure. Okay, I'll create this one as an abstract class. And let's say I have to save this information to table. Okay, in that kind of a situations, I'll create the concrete class. So let's think for this one. Okay, this data model. In this one, we are going to have the data. Okay, like we will fill the data, state code, state name, city, and city code. So in that kind of a scenario, we'll create this one for concrete class. So basically, concrete will have the instances. It will have the table. Okay, an abstract class will not have the table. It will just provide the abstractions. It, it will provide the structure okay for that we create abstract class i'll show you when i'll create that one also for now we have created a work and work will always have a concrete class okay work is always concrete class and it will have the table and where we can see that as i mentioned here uh, to see that okay which class is mapped to which table you need to come to uh, records come to sysadmin and then click on database table and you can see here so we have not created many classes as of now we have just two classes one is that work and history so work classes uh, like sorry work uh, classes refer to our work table and then history is history table that's it okay we will go ahead and create once we'll create the data model few i'll create a abstract and few i'll create concrete at that time i'll explain yeah sorry one more question what is the difference between pc and clear table i think we will come to that then uh, yeah, I, I can come to that one. I'll, I'll come to that come one. To PC that. is mostly we refer for the work and for the data one we refer peer. I'll, I'll come. Okay, when we'll create that one, you can see that here also. Okay, PC is for work and then for peer is referring to the data. Okay, you can see the data layer. So I'll, I'll come to that one. But what I explained, uh, that's enough for now. So let's go ahead and add, add the data model. Okay, so two way we can add the data model. One is that we can add, do it from the Dev Studio and 
the second is obviously we can do it from the uh, sorry first we should try to do it from the app studio if you're facing any issue then you should go for the app uh, dev studio but Pega is suggesting you should follow uh, more and more app studio one challenge you can face it if you go for a real development okay that from the dev studio i'll show you i'll not create from the dev studio for now but i'll show you so quickly let's say i'll say add data type okay so here you can see that i'm getting an options to select the rule set okay that which rule set you want to create so today you maybe you're creating everything to the applications layer okay applications rule set but maybe in future okay you will be locked this one and you'll follow the branch concept okay we can have some sessions on branch concept but i'm just explaining on a high level that in that case okay you cannot select this one rule set okay you want to create in branch and then once that it will be reviewed by your leads you want to merge so here you can see that you're getting more and more options you're getting parent class and other things now i'll show the same thing when i try to add a data type from app studio how it looks so here i'll come to data view data model so we don't have any okay so we'll just click manage and now i'll create a so add data object here it's the same so let's see that what options we'll get so see here it's just asking me implementation data class and then just date object name it, it it is not asking me to select other things okay so that is the, because see uh, app studio is more for the citizen developer okay the person who is not much familiar with the pega so he can just put a name and create a data object okay that is where sometimes we create from the dev studio okay but let's create for now because we don't have any branch or anything okay so let's create one data model so i'll say the first data model is applicant okay now this is one important define source data so if i say now that means it will create the table but we don't need the table for the applicant information okay for uh, like I need for a state i'll show you but here that is where we say later because once we select this one what we'll do pega will create a table also in the back end okay and then it will select the guid as a key by default okay so sometimes guid gives problem so that is where we'll not generate the source from here I, i'll show you how we can generate the source even if it is required but for this one definitely we don't need that okay so i'll say later the next thing is that attribute we can upload it from the spreadsheet but but i don't have for now so i'll just submit it so now we got one data class okay so i can add the attribute but before adding that attribute here i can see that okay applicant data model got created what happens in the back end in the dev studio let's go and quickly see for the one first one and then i will quickly create so here you can see that that applicant got added in data type we got a class also data applicant see we got a class also and one more things happened is that in cases and data okay if you remember we don't have anything inside data but we got one applicant see here so the more the more and more we create it will come here as still we don't have any case type that is where it's a saying blank so let's go ahead and add that attribute okay so now we have to add that attribute so we can do it from anywhere okay if you want to do it from that dev studio you just click here and then add that record here add the fields or we can do it from the app studio as well so let's do it from the app studio so now we have to add the fields so we'll say so it will take some time so just so i'll quickly add few attribute from here applicant name and then co-applicant name So we can give like in so you see here i'm giving like a business okay the way business have determined the attribute and pega will remove the spaces and it will create the property and if you want to select some other uh, type okay then also you can select it so but for now i'll just go and here we have one more things that how many maximum length you want in advanced configuration so if you want like let's say that 256 is not enough you can update it to 512 or whatever okay and then also descriptions if you want to give more meaningful descriptions that also you can add it from here only okay so let's just submit it so we got two attribute okay next attribute is here if you see we have an address but as i mentioned that i'll create a different class for this address okay so let's go ahead and add one 
new data class okay quickly so i'll come back okay and then again i'll say new and then i'll say address later i'll select later just focus on that one okay and then submit again we'll create an attribute here so in address i'll say straight name then we'll say state so state uh, will be going to add uh, drop down so from here we cannot do i mean we can try to do it okay but it will uh, like it uh, sometime it, it creates problems so i'll do it from the dev studio so for now i'm just creating a property so i'll create a state and just uh, submit it and then a state city submit and then zip code zip code or pin code we say in india something zip code and then mobile phone number also we need and then email okay let's see if you're missing anything no i think we covered all so done so you can see that all attribute came right now we'll create quickly one more we'll create a state as well see how fast i'm doing right so you can also do it okay it's not i mean because Pega is providing that options, right? We have to just fill, if you have that ready, like you can see that the design is ready, how fast you can do it. That is where we always say that focus on your design. Once your design is good, you can do the development very fast. So now I'll add that here again. So I'll say state, state port, state name. now for this one we need that okay we need the table but i'll not generate from here because as i mentioned that if i generate from here it will what it will do it will generate it give me the jiu id as a key okay which i don't want so what i'll select the key for this table is state code and city code so you can just think that this will be always unique okay so i'll generate later okay but for now i'll just simply first i'll create all data models so you can see that all is coming here now i'll quickly create driver i'll say letter and now quickly add that I'll add that name and then dob so for dob i'll select date and time date is also fine but sometimes we need that okay date and time or date only is also okay let's select date only and then submit add another we'll say we need age as well but we'll not ask the age from the users okay we'll try to use declare expressions to calculate okay age can be numeric submit and add another and then what else we have okay license number is it's married Eight. one question when you're creating the label yeah. you have others, right so there will be integer there will be text there will be a decimal so where are we defining the data type of this yeah here Benny you can see that okay so whenever I'm selecting right so I'm selecting either date or I'm selecting integer so here only you can define that so a uh, type their type yeah so here like you can see that is married is there right so now I can think that it should be a radio button okay so uh, when we create for radio button in drop down is so if your options is three or four then you can go for radio button but if your options is more than that okay you can go for drop down but uh, like sometimes it, it depends on the organization so here you can see that married okay so i'm selecting uh, a drop uh, radio button okay so here you can see that and in options also so married will not change so what happens that's options okay either you're married or not married okay and then you can also divorce and other things but for now i'll just add two choice okay and i'm adding into property only so i'll say yes or no so you see here from here only we can add that option also married and then license number obviously we need license number so you can see that for license number i'm selecting text but license yeah. Yeah. obtained date when we have got that license okay so for that one i'll select date 
and then what else left on this drive information and then we need uh, one unique id so i can say this is in for the state and all we'll be coming to the in uh, smart from the yes yes yeah so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll show you how we can add dynamic value to that one okay because see if you see in any country state can change city can change okay like even if a state is not like we're getting a new state but city we can get so i will show you that how we configure that options that we can add that in future okay without development so at the rssn i just added it and this one will be text submit and add another and then what else we have we have left with anything no we got almost all informations and finally i'll create vehicle informations and payment informations quickly so see this is taking time but once we create that one uh, it will be very easy because our attributes is ready we have to just do the development we have to create that ui so basically your skeleton is there i've added some flesh to it right like some of the attributes in the address and all tomorrow you may have a post box for your address for example yes, so yes. those those additional things you can add it in the future but yeah. uh, the skeleton of having the right frame structure plus some bare minimum skeleton things you are having it right? and those things should be there defined first in your design and then you build it over here and you can always enhance it and scale over it yeah yeah so for our vehicle we need vehicle name obviously company okay and then made years that is also important at in which years this vehicle has been made so this is important made years yeah so it is submit and i could have selected made year uh, to date and time but that's fine we can uh, change later if required and then number of wheels and then uh, number of air bag insurance number of wheels so we can select number of wheels integer obviously then we'll submit and add another and then number of air bag so you can see that okay so these attribute okay in real time so we are doing poc okay so we may not use all these attribute but in your real time when we are calculating the total amount for insurance okay so we'll build algorithm okay and then determine the total cost okay based on these attributes that is where we are taking this input now finally insurance type so here i'm adding that insurance type okay so basically this doesn't belongs to uh vehicle but this i'm adding for our calculations because based on that all when we'll add this one we'll select that which type we want to go okay but as i mentioned that in futures we'll select the insurance type okay let's say premium basics okay or advanced based on that and it will algorithm or algorithm should such a way that based on the uh, when the car is made okay which company it belongs what is the driver informations okay it will combine everything and then it will generate the cost okay but for now i'm just selecting insurance type and what we'll do here we'll learn decision table so if i'm selecting premium i'll just simply from decision table i'll get the value okay if it is a premium then 15000 per year if it is a basics then 10000 per year okay so here i'll use so i already i have told it we'll be using declare expressions for age here we'll use decision table submit i think we are done with this one also now let's go back and create one finally payment so for payment let me go back later see i'm 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 selecting for most of them i'm selecting later okay number okay we can have it text because sometimes card number can go very long okay and we don't have to do any calculations on card number so we'll just select card number and then expiry date expiry date this can also go text that's not a problem and then cpv and then zip code because zip code is also required okay so if you see here we have created okay 
all data type data model okay so how much time it took it, could, it took like 10 minutes 15 minutes for me but if you see it behind the scene okay we have spent good time to design this one okay so if you have this design ready now we can put quickly in the system it took some more time also to me but if you create excel okay pega is saying that you can upload csv file to create those attributes that then in that case it will be more faster okay so let's say if you're if you have a business analyst who can give a separate separate seat or you can like have a like this okay you can have uh, add uh, all data model like this then you can simply upload that seat and it will create attribute or property quickly now okay let's move to dev studio yeah, yeah. So before let's take that question for the PC one. Yeah, I'll show you Benny. So PC one I'll talk. Okay, let me talk on the GUID. Okay. So see, uh, then is GUID what happens? Okay, let's say we don't have any key. Okay, if you are unable to determine any key for a table. Okay, think uh, just uh, don't think about pega anything. Okay, if you are going to store employee informations that then we always think okay we can have employee ID as a key. But let's say if you are just going to store the country name, okay, and we are we are thinking okay country name and if I don't have country ID, then country name cannot be the key because what will happen? Animal, animal. Let's say if I am entering India, so I can enter India I in caps. Someone can rent, write I in a small, okay, or they can write in the middle, okay. Uh, some is like they can use um, mixed, okay. So in that kind of a scenario value is always a case sensitive okay so then problem will happen so that is where pega gives an option that okay i'll generate an id for you so we'll use GUID id as a property and in the class i'll show you so let me select one in class so here in the state let me open this class so here in the class we can say that okay generate that so here automatically generate a unique key for the record type so whenever so see the GUID came so whenever we select okay whenever we select any like add any data pega will automatically generate a value okay unique id okay for that only view so it, we don't have to worry about the key pega will take care of the key and then we can keep on adding getting it but will not we are not going to use GUID. It will like uh, it will generate auto. I can show you also. It will generate a sixteen digit or some number. Okay, let's say that in uh, in a table. Okay, if we use GUID, then we can add India also. I in caps. We can add another India. I in a small. Okay, but that will be problematic. So sometimes we use this one and Pega have don't have any options. So Pega use this one GUID. That if you want, you can use it or you can update it. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, Dhanush you got it. Okay, so now the next thing is that let's review the classes. Okay, so this so if you see let let me close this one. Now let's go to the data type. Okay, still we have not created the case type. Okay, so whoever is joining. Okay, still they can catch up. So we have created all data types. So you can see that address is there. Okay, and let me go to classes open class record so even i have selected from there okay i don't need i want to generate later pega have selected concrete classes so this is not right okay we don't need this one as a concrete so you can come to dev and you can change it to abstract class okay and this is inherited to our the base data as our application data layer so this is abstract okay i'll go one by one quickly even applicant also is we need just as abstract so we can quickly select abstract and then we have we have driver you we can we can do that okay uh, to save time we can do later also so i'll just do for like i'll not do for all now let's generate the data okay sorry source so let's move to a state one because in this one we want to fill some data okay so we'll come to records okay so we have not generated the source as of now there is no data like uh, database table generated so now i'll try to generate for this one and to do that i'll click on configure source okay see here and here i'll select that what key i want okay so i can say i'll move this one to top so that it will come in that same 
city and state code okay and then the state name so i can select this one as a key state code one second i remove this one also so i'll select these combinations as a key city code and state code okay so the moment i'll select this one as a key it will generate that and in the database it will form a composite key of a state code and city code and then also in our class it will add these two as a code okay so let's do that if you want to add a first record that also we can do that okay so let's say i'll say uh, what is that mp okay and state name uh, state code and then let's say i'll say okay and then ct code let's say for bhopal i'll i'll just add bh let's say and then i'll add here that things is bhopal city okay so this is the first record also we can add it from here so let me submit one more thing is that okay from here on it will generate that data pages as well okay to use that so we have you can see that uh, if you want you can generate it okay but if you don't want you can skip also so from here we can generate the state okay uh, uh, so this will be our, our the page type data page this will be a list type and this will be savable okay so three data page also pay will create that so let's do that okay so you can see that okay our table got created okay and these are the pega attributes which is required okay so this one you don't have to worry pega is adding it okay we use uh, sometimes let's say if you want to like put a conditions that if this record is updated if this record is updated by whom so for that we use out of the box for purchase so let's close this one now you can see that okay the table got generated in the back end okay in database because uh, this application is connected with one database one table got created and we added the data as well okay now let's go back and review that uh, data instances so we'll go to database table instances so if you remember earlier we had only one now let's go to database sorry not database database table so now you can see that okay we had one work okay we have added one more for a state see and this is pr so for the data that questions was there right so when we create pc and when is the pr so for data pega adds pr you can it's not necessary but this is how the patterns pega follows okay you can create only let's say you are creating a table manually then you can just create with the state name also okay it won't give any warning okay or anything just you need to come here and then change that name in six or seven versions and still in in few places okay where the pega doesn't have access to generate the source because some, like this pega have the access okay we have one id okay a database id which is walking and creating which is like creating table okay making ddl statement running ddl statement on database okay that is where we were able to create the data base table from here but if you don't have access what you have to do you have to raise a request separately in some organizations you you need the you need to get the table and once you'll come back to pega you need to create this database table instances and give the table name and then save it then the mapping will happen so basically it is linking that the table and the class okay now let's do test connectivity so if i do we'll get that same table name here so the news i hope that pc and, and uh, peer got sorted out okay so i'll just quickly add one more to so let's say i'll add state code ap let's say and then here i'll add ct let's say i will add hyd even though hyderabad is not in and this I'll just add it so we'll move little fast okay so we have added that now okay the most important things will create our case type so again we can add the case type from here because we are almost done with our data type okay we created a data type we created all attribute okay we needed one concrete okay we created that as well so now we'll move to next part is that we'll create a case type so let's go for creations of case type again to create the case type we'll move to app studio 
so whatever you can do it from the case type oh, sorry app studio you try to do it from the app studio only okay in that way you'll get used to otherwise you'll always feel okay i can do from the dev studio why you should go to app studio but more and more organizations and the like your leads will look that okay if you know the app studio or not okay so let's do that create a case type from here and now i'll add create so i'll just say policy okay policy means we are going to apply for a policy okay if i'll just add a claim then we are going to apply for claim so for now i'll just create it two to show you okay but uh, we are going to implement only policy Yeah. For data class, if you configure data source, then PR respected class name, and if you are not yes, that is correct. It maps source. to PR others. Yeah, it maps to PR others. Okay. Uh, but if you need, like, usually we should not follow that one. Okay, PR others. If you follow that one, then uh, because basically PR other what it does it it have a blob columns and it will store your data. Okay, into blob. Okay, blob. Okay, and if you try to fetch the data. Then performance issue and other things happens. So whenever you need your data, you should create a separate class. But you are correct that it will map to PR others. And sometimes we get in CSA questions also. This question that is correct. So now you can see that we created. So quickly we'll add the stage. So we'll create an app to. So we'll move a little faster and then we'll add fulfill okay so we added that okay and here you can mark that so this is our resolution step so we can say that yes resolve this case so you can see that here one green line is there that means we are starting okay and then the moment i'll say resolve this case then it will become red line so here you are saying resolve completed let me save that so you can see that this uh, uh, red line came that means this is our end one for a proof we are going to have the normal one uh, approve reject so you can simply uh, we can simply refer that approve reject so here this is the out of the box flow which is given by pega and we'll configure that if it, we are rejecting what should happen and if it is approving what should happen so i'll just select this one for now approve reject i will notice the moment we are adding approve reject approval or rejection stage is getting added okay so that is where alternate stage concept is there to handle any exception scenario So I just yeah. okay. I'll come to later on create okay, but for now I'll just add for uh, this one fulfillment process also. So in fulfillment process, what we want okay the payment information. So let's configure that UI for payment informations okay. Because those things I just want to quickly do that and then we'll come in create because in create we have a long list of data model it means that we have to create lot more uh, rows so. Now coming to here that we have a data model for payment process, payment information. So okay, we have to build that UI. How we can do that? So there is a two way. You can do it complete things manually, or you can do it from the App Studio as well. Okay. So Pega is saying that you try to follow that App Studio, but to follow that in App Studio, okay, if you have your data structure, then it will help you. Okay. So I'll show you how we can do it from the App Studio for payment information. So we have to just say collect information basically. So uh, we want to determine that we want to capture multi steps or that collect information. So multi steps means, okay, for a technical term, it will be screen flow means where we'll gather the data in multiple steps. Okay, collect information will be a process flow. So only one assignment, uh, like not only one assignment, we can have multiple assignments in that one, but it won't have the screen flow. So here in fulfillment stage, we don't want that one. Maybe we'll create in, uh, we'll use multi steps in create. In fulfillment, I'll just use collect information. So I'll say collect information. It will create in the back end, I can show you, it will create a uh, process flow. So I can just say payment information. So here we're trying to correct, collect payment information. Now, here you can see that options configure view okay and it is routing to current user so definitely we have to change the routing logic later on because uh, current users mean that login user so whoever is processing create cannot process approve and cannot process fulfill so we will we'll, we should have a three type of users also 
so for now i'll just simply leave it to current users and say configure view uh, let me click on configure view now here we have to add that okay so what we will do here so our data model is already ready okay but it is not linked with the work if you remember okay how we link with this work is we'll create one attribute called payment okay and that the type will be page so from here we can say that okay embedded data okay so basically in the back end it will create a property called payment okay and then object here we can select see in the drop down it's coming so we'll select select payment and in the definitions of that payment attribute we will see this payment class so after doing that i'll show you in the back like back end from the dev studio so let me select and then here it is asking how you want you want a single record or list of record so obviously payment information is single record so i'll just submit it so you can see that because it's an object okay then it is asking me to create a new view so i'll say payment information payment inner i can just name something inner or something like that payment inner that means so what will happen this payment will get created in work layer okay and this one will get created in data layer okay so you can see that we are just creating one sections okay and from there we'll call the data layer section okay and in that one we'll add the attributes i'll show you okay if you're not getting so let me create for now and here you can see that all attributes whatever i have created automatically it came see here it automatically it came now if you want to do some more formatting like if you want required or if you want to require based on some conditions that you can do later on on also so i'll just for now i'll just mark that as a few of them as a required okay and then submit it let me save it now let's go to dev studio and review that that what all rules it created okay so let's rephrase that we should got so see here we got a case type let's review that once we added the case type we got in cases and data you can see that policy and the prefix i have recently created a video on this one you must have watched if not then watch that how this prefix works okay so for now it's just added pdx so i'll leave it that pdx pdx if you want to overwrite that what video is there you can watch it so this is done now let's open this case type and from here we can open our process flow so let's open this process flow because for now for this one only we have created that ui so let me open this process flow so in process flow you can see that in design tab if i'll come we have created a flow standard okay standard flow not like i was telling now that if we use collect information we will create a standard process flow if you use a multi screen then it will create a screen flow so here we have a standard flow and we have one assignment so assignment is a kind of a where manual interactions will happen we will take some data from the end user end user will fill and then here we have referred one flow actions so one flow actions is there inside that one we have a section so you can see that one section is there okay if you notice these all are in work layer work policy okay this flow is also in work policy and then let me open this sections also this is also in a work policy okay now but this one okay i'll open it you'll find in the data layer see and then all attributes was here so this is where the usability and the structuring we are using right because these attributes belongs to data so why then why we should create these all in work okay and you can see that how we have referred is okay see pega have already referred that one but you need to understand that how it has been referred so you can see here they have referred use clipboard page and then they have they have given that page property okay and then they have selected that sections okay so i'll show you i'll delete and uh, i'll re-add it and show you that how we have to do it so that you should you should know that how we can add embed any sections okay so let's me come to work layer i'll show you that property as well so come to policy so we created one property so you can see that we created only one property but how many property we can access through payment see when i'm expanding we can see that we can access card number cvv expiry date name zip code okay so let me open this property so you can this see this property is referred to that payment class okay and in that one we have these attributes so now through this one we can create any rule okay 
so we can initialize this object and based on these objects we can create any rule so for now we have created one sections okay so let me delete this sections and re-add it for you so now here we have a work layer we want to add one data layer okay so let's do it okay how we can do it so we have to go to data display so this is again a theme cosmos uh, sorry we are using a template driven so wherever possible use the template driven approach okay and you can explore the options if you want uh, sorry if you want different different options you can select from here okay from the template if you don't if you need a, any different template try to create but avoid it okay but use a template driven so let's add it from here we'll go to data display and select embed sections so here you can see that now options is coming that how we want to embed that so if you just embed want to embed any existing sections like from the work we can just hit on drop down and we'll get it no issues from the same class see you can see that from same class we are getting we have only one section that is where we are getting the same section name. but we don't want we want refer the data page one so you can say that use clipboard page and then here we have to give the class so we have to give the class the same data class so we have to give payment and then we have to refer our payment property now if you see we'll get that inner see the data one see here that we got a data earlier it was coming from the work now we are getting from the data so see we can submit it and then few more things if you want to update we can update it like uh, header and other things so here we can say that payment information so here you can see that okay from the app studio using configure view we created a sections okay basically one ui okay and then it created one flow and then it created a flow actions then it created a sections and then it created another sections in data layer and then added all attributes inside that one you can see that it like we have used as of now here we have only used text input as a control but we will see other also so overall we created one ui now if you have to add the validate rule okay for now only we can create it and later we'll enrich this one so okay we can just simply go and then in validate rule okay so what we do we usually write validate and then payment informations we give the same flow access name and we can create it so i'm not going to add anything for now i'm just creating this rule so that futures we can add it okay because definitely we need some kind of validation so that card number should be 16 digit expiry date should not be uh, the past date it should do the future date so those kind of validations we need it so for now we can just create it and leave it one more things i've seen that the people will or the junior folks will clear create the rule but they will forget to save the parent rule so if we're creating this rule we need to come to parent rule and save that one okay otherwise we'll lose that so now we have created that so the whole structure is ready for that one for one year so we'll stop for a second here let let me know if you have any questions on on this one this whole things because we created end to one end one ui okay any question so let me see that okay if we get that uh, on the ui so we don't have now any any ui we have not created any ui on create but on approve yes we have created that so we'll see that approve reject okay and so we'll just for now we'll approve and we'll move to next stage and see we got that ui so the ui is there and if i submit it will ask that the validations is there okay so we created see how soon we can create it and it's looking good also we, we we are able to enter all the details whatever we needed it so any questions on this one the whole ui things hello any questions guys yes default view means the first view okay so you can see that okay the section so this sections has a two layer okay i'll show you here so for debugging purpose again you can learn one more things if you don't know so you have to just select this one live ui and from here we can see that if you just click here we can see the whole structure 
so as i was explaining so we have a flow but flow will not come here because that's not a component of uh, ui so you can see that flow actions is there inside that one we have a payment information and inside that one we have a payment inner so whole structure is there okay so this is the default view you can say that okay that is there in work class inside that one we have a data layer view and in this one we can add many let's say you want to add uh, one view from that uh, different data class from the driver information okay from that applicant information that also you can do just you need to refer in the same way okay so currently we have only one property in work payment we will be creating driver and applicant more so in that way you can refer more and more it's uh, 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 and number of things you can add it to that section. Any more question or shall we move ahead? Yeah, we can move ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, so we are done with this ones. Okay. Let's let's do one thing on the C1. Okay, approve reject. Okay, and then we'll finally go to. Okay, so what will happen? Okay, when we are approved and rejecting. So, if we are approving, okay, then what should happen? It should just move to the next stage. But if I'm rejecting, okay, it should go back to like we can do many things. Okay, that if it is rejecting, we can simply say reject. Okay, uh, resolve rejected. Okay, this is one of the options, and we can notify to. Um, that creator that your case has been rejected and then even to applicant with the reason okay this is another way that we can so it's like a hard reject we are rejecting that case another is that we can reject it and we can route it back to the initiator and say that okay because of these reasons i am rejecting your flow okay so i'll show you how we can route it back to the initiator because i'll, I'll show you both okay quickly so here you can open the flow again i'll show you how you can open the flow so click here in your case type here from open process open it so this is one way to open okay if you're a developer obviously you'll have in your work class always there okay from here also you can open anytime so there are like many ways to open the rule from here also you can do from records also you can do so there are many ways now here i'll click on this one and here we have an option that what we want to do if it is approved then continue and set the status now we want to set that status so what we say want to set that is pending fulfillment so we have you can see that in the drop down we already have this status if we don't have we can create it okay so here we'll again learn one more things so whenever we create this kind of a status or anything we created a create a filled value okay so that it will help in the future let's say that uh, we have used this uh, status in 20 places in our applications pending fulfillment so if someone is asking business is asking now change it from fulfillment to something else so then if we create a filled value rule we can update in one place and it will get updated in 20 places so let's see how we can create this filled value also okay so pending fulfillment is there so just for show you i'll create one okay for you so I, let's open it from here so you can see that this is showing filled value on this this is opening so how where we can see the field value okay so we have to go to data model and then field value and the field value name is you can see that field value name is there so our name is a status py status work or something so see py status work so we can create a field value so you can see that we have a resolve completed if i search that fulfillment will get that the one which we were see See, we have a pending fulfillment. Let's say we want to create a pending fulfillment one, okay, just to for learning purpose. So then we can just save as this one, any existing one. We can rename that pending fulfillment one, okay, and then create it. So now, and then here, so this is the value, okay, uh, and then uh, for translation also sometimes we use for different languages, okay. So translate from this one to this one, so this one I will update it to this one. Now let's say we are referring as I mentioned to 20 places, okay, so then we don't have to go in 20 rules, okay, we can simply update this one and it will work, okay. So for that only we create a field value and we do not create field value only for a status, okay. So this again, junior developers have seen that most of the times, okay, they think, okay, that why I create and then they'll just put that hard code value in all the places, but no, we have to create a field value for 
any type of things like where we are hard coding okay free text okay like let's see you can they see the tool tip if you are using any tool tip for for captions for messages even for messages and captions we should create a field value so that as i'm explaining that will help in language translations plus it will help you if you are using in multiple places okay from one rule you can update that value okay so always make a habit to create a caption like basically field value okay and what type of field value if you don't know just write it from wherever you need it and then click on magnifying glass like here okay and then it will pega will automatically take to that property it will create a field value but for now i'll use the pending fulfillment so if it is approved then i'll say pending fulfillment if it is resolved okay so see here we can see that resolve rejected okay so that means it will just reject and close the flow okay so let me submit it and quickly create case and reject it and, and show you what will happen so policy i'll just say create and then reject it see the case got closed is all rejected it's done okay so we don't we can't do anything on this one so this is like a hard reject okay we are rejecting that but we don't want this one i mean so you learn one thing okay that how we can handle one rejections hard rejections let's learn the other word also if rejected then we want to change the stage okay and to which stage we want to go we want to go to approval rejection stage okay or from here so here we are not getting any options to go to the first stage okay so that's like one bigger thing so here we are not going to create a stage okay so that options is not coming but we can go to rejection stage at least from here so we can say that okay i want to go to rejection stage and set that status so this time instead of uh, sending uh, uh, instead of setting resolve rejected we can set something else okay so we can let's see uh, i can say that open rejected let's say so let's create a field value again and see like as i'm saying may, uh, like i have seen that people will just hard code the value and then save it and uh, if i just save it pega will not give any error okay but then in problem problem will happen in futures when we want to update these things and that is where the maintenance cost becomes high so let's uh, uh, try to make a habit to create a new one so i'll say create a new one So some problem is happening so i'll just simply save as this one only sorry i'll take this one open rejected and create it done okay so see it didn't take even a minute now if i go in a drop down we'll find that open rejected okay so let's submit it now let's see what will happen okay let me create a case and this time if i reject let's see uh, why it's going to resolve completely let me see that case type also once because looks like in case types we have resolve completed yeah wait for user action so i'll just select here it was resolved the case that is where it was coming okay it, it tried to process that one as well so we'll just say wait for the user actions in this also now we should see that status see open rejected case now from here if you want to take any actions or if you want to uh, bring that flow back to here that also we can do if you want to do any notifications and that also we want to do if you want to do we can do that okay so let's add a flow here to handle that approve rejection so we can say collect information uh we can say uh flow name okay fine we'll give uh, handle rejection so we can just say handle rejections we can we can give a better name and the rejection so basically what we want to do here okay on rejections we want to handle it okay so what we want to handle if you want to let's say notify and then change the stage back to create that also we can do it okay so let me save it and let's open the flow and in this one what we'll configure that change it back to and send it to send the case to uh, the create stage so let me delete this one we don't want any manual actions basically so now we want to change the stage okay so to change the stage we have advanced say okay automation save so from this one we can select change stage so let's do that advanced save and automations change to change stage somewhere we should see change stage so we 
I got this one also and before changing a stage we want to let's say notify so then we can also select notify here we should see notify somewhere uh, send not email send notification so we want to do that as well so we want to do both so this one is done this one let's do that so first we want to notify and then change stage and after changing stage we want to move it to create a stage so that initiator can again update the data and resubmit that case. So let me know if you're getting this flow okay and also before okay we moved away from the approve okay so on this one also I have a separate video okay here you just we saw that single level approval okay but if you want to do a cascading approval let's say that uh, uh, like level one approval so if uh, your manager is approving you need senior manager approval and then senior director approval so multiple levels also you can do that so that i have already uh, created a video on that one based on that reporting structures or authority matrix authority matrix where i have used decision table so just take a look that one also okay if you want to enhance your knowledge on this one because you'll get this kind of a business scenario where you have to uh, do multiple levels of approval so now here send notifications so before configuring send notifications here we'll give our stage name so i know the problem will happen the same here will not get our uh, create a stage so uh, there is a trick to do that okay so what we'll do i'll open this activity so now so if you click on that one right click okay you'll get an options to open activity because basically this is a activity only in a form of shape so now i can what i can do i'll select this one px change to a specific stage and then or or change stage px change stage is that activity name i forget that let's try that so what we can do we can remove this one and add utility shape okay and refer that utility shape here then this will ask to give me the stage name okay so here it's a saying other and then okay i think that was also asking me other and in other so coming so in other we can give one second i think that was also asking let me see that but if it is not coming oh i lost that if it is not coming you can configure like you can use that activity and and use it it configure it so let me add quickly those two steps so send notifications and then automations and change to stage and change to stage let me see if i can do that i'll select other and in other i'll give create submit it now let me submit it okay so what it will happen okay now if you see here open rejected but where is the stage we are sitting still in approval rejections but we don't want we want that case to move again back to create so that creator can submit it so let me create another case this time and see what will happen if i reject okay so we got into some error problem flow okay so because the send utility we have not configured the details so that is where so let me remove for now this send notifications once we'll configure that whole data we'll put it back so let me create this again no still it is going to that stage only Approval rejections flow create a stage location. This cannot be re enter this stage. Okay, so yeah, that is where Pega is complaining that we cannot re enter that to that uh, initial stage because the create stage. But like uh, uh, Pega is saying that, but sometimes we need that okay to go to that initial stage. But we can go to uh, here. Pega is saying that you cannot go, but there is a way uh, that is where I was explaining. Okay, let me try that. Okay, but it all depends on the business scenario if you really need it. Okay. Uh, so let me see okay i'll try to do it in a different way p exchange stage yeah 
yeah so i'll use this activity with this one we can go so this is a walk around but yeah you should try to avoid that one okay but for now i'm just showing you so the basically my motive here is to learn how to change the stage and i think that you are learning right so that is the most important things from create i if i want to like i already showed you from here uh, from approve flow we change that stage to approval rejections and then from approval rejections we want to change it to create okay but you can go to some other stage also okay so that is what the main intentions here to learn that how we can use the change stage so i'll use configure utility and in this utility i'll just give that name p exchange stage and in this one it will ask the parameter so in this one i can change to a stage i can say create so hopefully it should work and then clean up process if you want to give audit note you can do that so let's link it again so, so you can see that how many rules i am covering right so i covered this change stage as well okay and interview whenever you are going so you always ha you have to talk about change stage because um, any any alternate flows okay we use that okay so here you can see that okay here we have only approval from payment informations let's say if you're getting any exceptions so in that case we need to jump to alternate stages and then your your case can go to exception scenario and from there you want to handle it differently either you can you want to resubmit or whatever you want to do so that is where uh, this is change stage is important concept so let me try again is not working fine we'll move ahead okay because uh, intention is here to learn change stage yeah it's just the same issue it's complaining in seven like sorry in 8.6 at least it was working but it's not working that's a fine okay we can add another stage here and then we can send it okay so let me just uh, hello yeah Ali, maybe we have to add a run on re-entry on that after configuring uh, process. No, I think I think I checked that one. I think that's not an even options uh, for uh, starting step. So let me open, show you here. I saw that. <laughs> See, in create, we don't Maybe. have options. So, okay. Yeah, for like for primary stages, we have that, okay? See, run on re-entry. So if I'll just add another stage after create, let me add one stage here. I will show you. So let's say enter details some sections okay policy details i'll just keep policy some uh, stage name then it will work one second i'll refresh Basically, and it's a good point that why you want to go to the create one, okay? So you can have another stage if you want to go, let's say, now if I'll give policy, it will work, okay? I'll, I'll show you. So let's come to the flow here. And save it. And as you mentioned, I'll ref ref refresh this one and select run on re-entry. So run and re-entry, a good point, he mentioned that if you want to go to any particular stage again, okay, if you want to re-entry, then we have to select and how we can do it, okay, from the case type will not get an option. So how we can do it, we have to come to the case type, from the actions, we can open the case type rule. So click here, open and then select and then come to stages and select any particular stage for which you want to re-enter and once you select that one, you'll get an options here. Where is that? For this one yeah we need create one flow yeah yeah we need one flow so i'll just add a flow also uh, automatically launch this process so let's say i'll just add any existing flow okay approve flow or something i'll just add a flow and then you can see that we got a options run on re-entry so now if i'll run we'll go to policy stage see we got to policy stage so we are sitting on policy stage with approval so, but it's fine we, we delete we'll delete it for now we don't need it i just wanted make you to learn okay the change stage how change is working so for now instead of changing stage i'll just put notifications and then uh, resolve that uh, case okay so how we can do it so we can add automations send a notification and then we can uh, say uh, we can here we can say resolve 
completed so there is no human interaction so in that case we can select in the case type as well here only we can mark this as a resolve completed so resolve instead of completed we can say resolve rejected but you understood it right that how we are doing it okay why i was showing that what will happen you need to send this case from here to creator okay so once we'll add this policy details okay so how you do the routing that is what i wanted to show you okay so let's have that one okay instead of deleting okay i'll add i'll policy i'll, I'll just make that enter policy details okay i'll enrich this one and i'll create a separate flow i want to show that one that how we'll handle that when we are rejecting so here i will just say that collect information policy detail save it okay and let's change that add the change stage as well it wants to say automations change to the stage because that is where i have seen that many people do the mistakes even i ask question in interview and people not give answer so here i'll just select policy details this is fine submitted now when the flow will get rejected okay so here you can see that when i'm processing entire things with the same id there is no issue okay but when we are like using a different id okay so here if you see the routing let's see the routing it's a showing current user okay but it cannot be current user right because the person who is approving because this stage we are coming from here to here okay so once we'll reject it from approval we'll go to approval rejections and from here we'll come to policy details let's say okay in case of rejections and then this current user might not work okay getting it because when i'm approving my user id and where i want to route that's a different one so in that case what we can do we can route it to the creator okay so let's go back and update this routing so you are getting it right so whenever we create any uh, case okay pega stamps that create operator so let's see on the py workspace on the clipboard so if i open p4 if you'll come here and in py workspace you'll see create operator see you can see that create operator so this is what we have to use for routing so either you can use this one or if you want to go in more details you can use the work party as well for the routing so you can in work party you can see that we have we don't have any slice any work party but we can add work party also that this is the process so has created so we can say as the creator work party approver work party fulfiller work party so you can use work party as well so for now we'll just use uh, instead of current operator we'll say operator and then here it says asking operator so we'll say custom and a work list and instead of router we'll say px create operator so let me copy that so i'll just refer this one getting it understanding it why because when rejections will happen we want that flow to move dynamic okay it should go to the same person who has created that request so now okay let me create so any questions here before we move because this is where the, we are handling that rejection this is a important concept okay it will you'll always see in your flow okay either you are getting this uh, um, in this scenario in case of rejections or in case of uh, either you are requesting for more informations from the initiator the person who has created that request so that is where we need to understand this routing and i have like i always ask this question that how you will handle the routing many people will not answer so here we have to handle the routing we have to uh, route it back to the creator or to that creator work party so it will work in both the scenario when we are creating that time also worked and when we are routing rerouting then at that time also it will work so any questions here okay no questions then let's move to another a very good concept notifications okay but before that what i'll do i'll create two users okay so i'll create one creator and one approver so let me quickly do that that will help us so i'll just say auto i'll say user 1 user 1 
period and then this time I'll update this to users sorry uh, ins users and in will mention user one submit it and then I'll create approver one So we are done. Let's let me create one case and show you this this rejections one only. Okay. So go to new cognito and then copy that URL. So you can see that I referred that okay you can ask the question that why we got for this users why we got that user portal not the day portal okay so the answer is there is the access group we updated that access group in access group the default one is oh, where is that author not author I close that user let me open that user one so in this one our, our, our access group is author sorry users and in users we have only only one user portal so I will create the case quickly so I'll select policy before that we'll do one more things okay so here that routing for that approvals let's learn that routing also so here we are always routing to whom okay it's always going to that to the same person okay but we want to change that one as well because approver should not like creator should not approve that case so let's do that we'll try to update this one as well so here you can see that single level and we are routing to a specific user so instead of that okay we will route it to the walk queue okay so here again we will learn the little concept of uh, you can see that how I am trying to cover everything okay here we will try to learn little concept of get next okay and then walk queue routing so let's open this flow again and here in, in routing okay so you can see that single level routing is there okay specific to auto admin no where we want to route we want to route it to approval so we don't so we can uh, create a work basket approval work basket if you want to route it to approval work basket so let's go ahead and create a approval work basket and stop me if you have any questions okay so to create a work queue where we have to go so work you will find in organization so in organizations we'll create uh, and then here we'll get work queue sorry i think i clicked work group let's create a work and we can give so usually we give a name uh, in that format like uh, applications and then colon and then um, the work basket name but for now i'll just give approval work basket what all things is mandatory so organizations is mandatory so we'll just give qtm and then i think we created insurance and then unit is unit let's just save it please enter unit okay so now will route it to this approval work basket so whenever i'll submit a case it will go to approval work basket now who can access this case okay so this is like a get next work concept who can access whoever has the access to this work basket they can access this case okay so what to so i want to configure okay that approver one okay can access this work basket so what we'll do we'll go ahead and, and add this a work basket to that operator ID. So we created approver. One second. Okay, so here in we will come in work tab and in work tab we have an option to configure work queue. So we'll just configure the same work queue emergency threshold will learn later okay so now we have assigned this uh, walk you also and we can update this organizations but this is not required for now okay so let's create one case from that user so I'll create that one okay policy details so we are in a policy details okay so let's advance this flow okay so this case went to so this case went to this uh, approval work baskets how we can verify that one okay so let's go ahead and check that one okay so how we can verify that one so to do that we need to go to assigned as work basket instances so let's click here so you can see that we just now we created p9 let's check that the case id p9 which went to work basket see here we can see that 
work baskets and to whom it is assigned how we can identify to whom it is assigned so case can be assigned okay on a high level to work list or work basket and the attribute which holds that okay the name is px assigned operator you can see here the px assigned operator in the name of our work basket is approval if it is going to work list then it will show that see here we can clearly see that it's a broken process but it will show the user name okay now to approve or reject that case we need to log in with approver one okay and then submit that case so once i'll reject it it will go back to user one okay so let's see that because i have configured that if i'm rejecting it should go back to that initiator so i'll log in with approver one So now you can see that you don't have any options okay, to see that cases. So again, we need to do one more things. We need to add the get next work okay, on this portal. So as of now, it is not there. So let's do that quickly that as well. Okay. So to do that, what we'll do, we'll open the portal again right here from web portal. Stop me, okay, asking the questions if I'm going a little fast or if you're not getting it. Okay. So we are like trying to cover few concepts from the uh, get next work. So, uh, we're trying to do a get next okay so here we didn't route it to approver work list so we have routed to work basket that work basket is there in his operator id but uh, they he don't have any options to do a get next work so let's add that get next work also on the portal so i'll try it to add it just besides discover so i'll just open these sections using the live ui and then i'll save as in my applications rule set and then just add that get next work so I'll have a button, okay, here, uh, in data capture, no, actions, and then we have a button, and then here we'll have, we can just say get next, and then change that action, action, sorry. So on click, what we want to do, we want to do get next. So we have already, so you can see that we have many actions on this one. So I'll just configure get next. So you can see that we have a get next work. So I'll just select get next work. And then we'll leave it other things and default. Now we saved it. Done, okay. Let's come back to this portal and refresh the portal. We should see that get next work button. So yeah, it came. Now let me hit this one. So once I'll hit okay which case we should get we should get p9 so let me do that so see we got p9 now i'll reject this case one okay so reject now let's do that reject okay see it went to policy details okay and let's go back and check that okay so there is some extra access to this one. So that is where, sorry, it is showing, okay, here that I can access, but ideally in real time, he cannot access this one. So let's see that, okay, where this case is sitting. So how we can check that one? So we'll again go to assign this work basket. We can see that P9 is not there. So this times we can check that work list. Let's see that. See, P9 is here and it is assigned to approver one. Oh no, it should not be signed to idly approver one. Okay, let me check that. PX assigned operator. Approver, it should assign to idly user one because we have created that. Okay, let me see if we have saved this flow or not. Approver, sorry, not this flow. Let me close few things. We have opened multiple things. Let me refresh this one. Then let's check that policy details. Let's check this PX create operator. Yeah, this is correct only. So it should not uh, go to this one. Let me create another case with user one quickly and rules. Because user one is creating, so it should not go. Okay. So I'll just quickly submit it. Okay, so it went to approve widget. Let me go to approve one. Let's do a get next work. Man, we are in a policy details. 
group reject reject no some issue okay so let me see why this is going again to approver one I have preferred here px create operator okay so definitely it should not go but so fine but for now what i'll do i'll hard code it username because we have only one but we need to configure that uh, px create operator okay and it should work okay so i don't know why it's not working router sorry i think we did some mistake to work list we have to select here and in this one in place of operator we have to give px create sorry my bad okay so we have configured wrongly so here what we have to do we have to select walk list and then two walk list router and then instead of giving hard code value i'm giving dynamic okay px create operator so i'm hoping this is a valid property let me just search it um, i will give the same name no i think we are doing some spelling mistake yeah so this is the correct property so i'll get copy and then save it submit let's test it now let's create a case advanced explore okay we went to uh, get approval let me go back to login with approver one let me do get next we should get p11 i don't know why this policy details is coming twice but that's fine i'll reject it policy details let's see that to whom it went yeah see it, it got assigned to user one you can see that right so the px assigned operator is user one so if i come to that user one let me log in again with user one so we can see this case in their work list so then now he can what he can do he can update the details and resubmit why this is it's not showing in their work list policy details to p9 sorry p9 where is that p11 okay one second let me check that the p11 is still sitting in the work basket how oh, come one second let me log in with approver one get next work and then p11 let me reject it it's going to policy details and then let me refresh yeah it went away from here so yeah now it came p and then operator id and then here let me refresh we should see here sorry this is not p1 sorry sorry my bad i have to log in with p1 I'm sorry user 1 here yeah. p1 p11 k so you're getting it right that how we are doing okay so what i did let me recap quickly on this whole process i know like uh, we got into some issue okay so basically we have to read out back to that initiator okay so how we can configure it okay so on the assignment set we have to come and if you want to route to the same person okay then you have to select custom in route to and then you have to select assignment type work list and then to work list and then we have to give px create operator or like whatever the property which is holding that the initiator the person who has created so you should not create your own property you can use the out of the box property px create operator okay uh, this will be helpful so let's move ahead so we understand it understand it how we are doing rejections and then after rejections we can resubmit okay so if i resubmit then again this case will go for approval so second time so i can update the data as of now we don't have but we can update it and then it will again go for the approval so see it again went to approval so if i go and again check that assigned as work basket we should see that case p11 from work list it came back to work basket so any questions on this one i i know it went little long but let me know if you have any question 
we can discuss and then move forward hello any questions Any question from anyone? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, move forward. Okay. Okay. So let's let's move ahead with the next one. Okay. So the next topic is important one that how we can configure this notifications. Okay. So we saw that we are like kind of able to reject that flow. Okay. Uh, but now we want to configure that uh, uh, this one also. Okay. Uh, to send an email so to send an email okay again um, we have a separate video on this one okay but i'll try to quickly show it so the first things which we need is that we need a one email account okay and that email account should be working okay so how we can create an email account okay so we, we need to go to configure and then integrations and then email and then here email account so usually how we create the email account the name of email account should be the same as our work group okay class group so our class group is this one okay so i'll create because in in the back end pega uses this class group so dynamically they face the class group name and then it will look for that email account with the same name okay so i'll just copy this one and i have already created okay so i'll just save as this i'll just save as this one this rule okay uh, let me show this from here it's not opening with our name Data. Account instances test. Now I got an options to save as. I was not getting options from there, so I'll just quickly save as and then fine. Now we can see that in this list integrations refresh this list. So, yes, we got it. Okay, with the same now. Okay, so the first things we need is that email account we did it now the second things which we have to do we have to configure that okay send email okay so here in the you can see that i have configured let me open the flow again here so now let's open the flow here so in this flow click on send notification so it is asking a notifications name okay so earlier in six versions or seven versions we used to use send email okay or send call but here we have an option called send notifications it's a uh, features which will send three kind of a notifications it can send it can send a web, web notifications email and mobile notifications okay so we'll quickly go ahead and create a notifications name okay i'll show you okay so here we can say that rejections let's create quickly and in it will create a rejections notifications now what we want to do we want to configure email notifications as well as the web notifications so web notifications will find it here okay so let's quickly do that so in channel will come here and then we have the default one so for now i'll just leave the default one but to whom we want to send that notifications okay so let's see that yeah here you can configure to whom we want to send this okay so we want to send it to the creator okay because when the rejections will happen again we want to send it to px create operator so we we can just give that same value px create operator so i'll copy this one and i can configure this one let me know if you're not getting okay so here the first things we created is a channel name and in channel name we have to give to whom we want to send notifications so i gave that recipient details okay you can we have multiple options okay you can do that so for now i've just given px create operator okay so the persons who is creating on rejection send it notifications here in channel we have a web channel okay and then mobile channel so an email in email we have a correspondence rule so you can update that details okay uh, you, you, here we have a correspondence rule so we can update that one but for now i'll not update okay we are running out of time so i'll just leave that one as it is okay one more things we learn here is that in advance okay so here we have an option to mute notifications and not configurable from ui what is this mute is that we never want to send it and not configurable from ui is so let me show you So here, okay, uh, not configurable from UI. So if you come here in preferences, okay, in notifications preferences, we'll see that options, okay, for this case type. 
so you can see that we have a policy case type in policy case types we have an option c rejection so that came so let's say you want to give these features to users that they can configure that they want to receive notifications or not okay so we can configure from here if you want if you don't want you want it okay user cannot control i always want to send notifications then what we can do we'll simply go and say not configurable from ui let me show you the moment i do this one and save it and refresh and reload that one that options will go away see that options is not there so usually if you see in, in today's world whenever we are developing any applications we should give an options otherwise that unnecessary email will go to that person so that is where we should give an options to configure but sometimes okay if you are really think that no in this business scenario i always want to send an email i don't want to give configuration then we can leave it okay now let's create a request and reject it and see if we are getting a, an email okay so let me log in with users one so i have already logged in with user one i will create a request advance this case we went to approval okay i'll log in with approver one i'll do a get next work so you should get p12 yes we got it and reject it okay so we rejected it now let's go back to that uh login with user one okay so ideally i should have got a notification here because okay i think we have not configured yet sorry so see this is the mistakes which we do okay we created notifications name but we never configured it so now we have to configure that rejections name here and submit that and recreate that case so let me do that again so again i'll create a case with user one okay let me create a case I don't want to approve from this one. I'll, I'll show you if I'll approve. Let's say even if you're getting an option, if you'll approve, you'll not receive notifications. Okay, I'll explain you the reason. So we should get P13. I'll reject this one. Okay, uh, let's see if we're getting. And one more thing, so you can see the case history from here. Okay, so in actions, we have so this we call a local actions. Okay. So we have uh, like whatever the actions we are taking on the case. So we have everything here in case history and then case narrative also. Okay. So let's log in with users one and see that. Yeah, see, we got a notification. So you can see that. So how easy a, a rejection is registered in the application. So basically, why we are getting this message is because we didn't update our message in the notifications. But you can go ahead and you can update that message. Where we can do that in channel. Here you can see that what message you want to display. So if I'll open this one you can update this value okay you can create your own rule and then similar way you can create a email subject notifications also here you can create and then um, correspondence rule also you can create but i'm not doing it right now i just explained it okay but you can see that we received a web notification so email also we should receive uh, it's taking some time but yeah we should get that email notifications as well so any questions on this notifications i, I covered that notifications part let me know if anyone have any questions, anything, any doubt on this notification, because this is one of the again important topic and you'll use a lot. Okay. In each and every applications will have this notifications feature. And this is the new way earlier, as I explained that we used to use with the agents, either we used to use send email, send simple email. We have few activity, which we used to activity or we used to use send call. Okay. Which was giving to agent. Okay. We have a, a send a email, send core email agent also. But this email is getting sent through the queue processor. I can show you the queue processor also. But let me know if you have any questions on this part. Any questions, any doubt? Hello. I think we're good. Let's proceed. Mm. 
okay okay so we covered that notifications also so if you just recap how many type of things we uh, features we covered okay so we covered the case type okay uh, i mean like we created like the applications then we created the case one case we created and then we configured the flow actions okay i mean like we config configured that view basically use ui from that uh, app studio we created flow actions we created sections we saw that how we can embed the data uh, sections data class sections in that work layer uh, sections and then we saw that how we can handle the rejections in flow we we handled notificate notifications as well Uh, uh, yeah so we we learned this many things okay so i'll quickly show you a few more things i'll try to build this ui okay and then uh, so if you want you guys want to take a break maybe we can have another sessions next week so let me know how we want to do or we want to take a break and then come back after some time like uh, like five minutes break and then we can again uh, move from here so please let me know anyone have any any comment because i know it's it's a late night in india so we can stop and we can proceed next week and we'll try to complete this application so uh, please let me know okay so few people are saying next week so fine let's stop here only okay so what we will do next week okay we'll try to configure that our first stage where we will be learning decision tables uh, validations declare expressions and then cascading drop down so those things we learned we moved little like uh, we started it from the back okay we created the ui for uh, fulfillment but yeah ui we learned okay how we can do it and it, i explained i spent some time on the rejections and notifications because this is also very much important change stage we learned so let's do it next week okay uh, we can set up time we can discuss and set up that sometime uh, next week and in the meantime i'll, yes. I'll upload this video on youtube also so that uh, if you have missed or if you want to what you can do in the meantime in this week okay you can try to catch up with me so create that this whatever I've done it till this week. Okay, today. Okay, do it, complete it and come back the next week so that from there we can complete that application. Yeah, Ben, you were saying exactly. something? Yeah, I was just saying the same thing. You got it right. <coughs> we should be doing some hands-on if you can spend some time. In, and that will help you to brush up the things that's been taught today. And you will get to more uh, comfortable positions, right? So... So yeah, I would suggest like uh, do the steps, videos will be there, you can rewind, repeat and try to do the things uh, that will help you only in the longer run. <clears throat> and, uh, the, it, and all questions that will be there. So next session, we will take first the questions and from the previous section, this, that is this session, and then we'll have a quick recap and then we'll proceed on the next topics like decision tables and tools of and those uh, valid expand right so 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 get get those uh, the done and then but but the key thing i would say rewind and do some hands-on uh, while uh, offline that would be the key thing then you can ask the right questions because definitely when you make get into it you will have some questions and don't think any questions like whether should i ask it or not okay? don't worry ask any questions you, you have feel free yeah so that is that is very much important yeah if you like as i'm saying if you'll try to do it whatever uh, we have done it today and uh, i will proceed with the next week you'll learn a lot okay you'll be able to complete almost all csa topic not only csa topic okay these are the topics which we use almost in like all applications okay these are the very basic concept which you should know yeah okay so thank you thank you very much for today yeah yeah, I think let's wrap it up. We are almost uh, uh, have a very good session. And guys, we'll see you again in the next weekend session. We will schedule and we'll publish it over the things as we talk. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Good night. Have a good weekend. Bye. Good night.